This is Seven National News and in our top story. President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan has directed the immediate start of an air bridge to send urgent relief shipments of blankets, winter clothes and food supplies to help hundreds of thousands of refugees in Jordan and Lebanon. As temperatures are dropping below zero, the entire Levant is preparing for a powerful snowstorm that will bring heavy rain, hail and snow over the coming days. The UAE president was quoted as saying that the country remains committed to its humanitarian message and will continue to be a global humanitarian capital and a major hub for helping those in need. The president has invited all organizations and national bodies in the UAE to participate in this nationwide campaign, which aims to involve all citizens and residents to contribute to alleviating the suffering of refugees during the harsh winter. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, has also directed that all concerned parties should start the immediate execution of the air bridge to transport urgent relief shipments. Snowstorm Huda is expected to arrive in Jordan, Palestine and Lebanon today, with wind speeds expected to hit 110 km an hour. Due to increased snowfall as a result of the storm, temperatures are expected to drop to minus 4 degrees centigrade in some areas. A senior official from the Strategic Planning Department of the UAE Armed Forces has stated the National Service will act as a positive community development process by enhancing loyalty to the country and boosting its security in line with Vision 2021. The comments came during the announcement of the draft 2015-17 strategy for the National Service at the Armed Forces Officers Club in Abu Dhabi. The draft strategy states that three batches of about 5,000 to 7,000 conscripts will be enrolled every year to build the National Reserve Forces, with the enrollment procedure now also to be facilitated by a new SWAT app, which will allow recruits to register information and upload documents instead of having to visit a registration centre. The service is intended to save time and reduce inconvenience, particularly for those who live far away from the centres. The draft strategy also highlighted that national service may speed up the national drive of Emiratization in the country through increased youth employment, make Emiratis more competitive in the job market, where they can be taught skills and educated to a higher level regardless of social background. The draft strategy of national service states that the concept of national security is not confined to strategic and military dimensions, but also encompasses economic, environmental, cultural and other aspects, ensuring the stability, growth and prosperity of society. The Federal National Council's Committee on Foreign Affairs, Planning, Petroleum, Mineral, Resources, Agriculture and Fisheries resumed its review of a federal draft law on food safety during, sixth, during its sixth meeting. The, committee, uh, the chairman of the committee, Rashid Ashuraiki, said that it had approved a report on the amendment of some articles of the federal law number 24 of 1999 concerning the protection and development of the environment and completed discussion on the bill regarding food safety. Stressing the importance of the bill, Ashuraiki stated that the draft law deals with food safety of both man and animal and it will tighten control on the food supply chain by using international best practices. According to the government's explanatory notes submitted to the FNC, food safety is one of the government's top priorities. Given the close interlink between the health and safety of the community and the quality and safety of food, in addition to the tremendous challenges that the food control authorities are facing in regards to spread of foodborne diseases, deployment of advanced technologies for production, processing and marketing of food, commercial fraud in food and the growing demand for healthy food, as well as the increasing expansion of world free trade. A senior police officer was quoted on Monday as saying that Dubai is considering allowing its employees to be late for work in heavy fog conditions to avert road accidents. According to a local Arabic daily, Major General Mohammed Saif Zafin, the assistant police commander for operations at Dubai Police, said he had made a proposal allowing all employees in the Emirate of more than two million people to be late for work for at least one hour in case of heavy fog. He added that while we cannot totally stop traffic on roads in foggy conditions, we can prevent serious accidents on roads by creating awareness and allowing flexibility in work hours for the employees. Major Zafin is seeking legislation or at least a decision allowing the employees to be late for work for, for one or one and a half hours in the early morning on foggy days, which has always been a major cause of serious road mishaps. 
The officials stated that adopting flexible work hours for the employees in such conditions could prevent accidents and save lives. And despite a raft of warnings against the use of mobile phones while driving, motorists continue to place themselves and others in harm's way by keeping their eyes on the smartphones instead of the road, according to the police. The Dubai Traffic Police Department issued 40,957 fines for motorists who were using their mobile phones while driving in the period between January and November 2014, with the fine for using the phone while driving at 200 dirhams and four black points. According to Colonel Saif Maher al Mazroi, the director of Dubai Traffic Police, many people, especially the youth, still do not take seriously the risks and dangers of texting and driving or being distracted when driving. He added that anything that distracts people from driving, even changing the channel on the radio, puts the driver and the people around him at risk. With a large number of fines issued for this offence, the police are looking into creating an awareness campaign to warn against the dangers of texting and driving in particular. While there are no specific statistics on accidents caused by drivers on their phones, there were 111 accidents caused, caused by motorists who were distracted or careless between January and November 2014. Six people died and 100 were injured in those accidents. Dubai has added a new world record on its list as it successfully entered its 22 million dirham longest gold chain into the Guinness World Record on Monday evening. Residents and tourists can view the world's longest 22-carat gold chain until Thursday, the 8th of January. The magnificent display was unveiled yesterday near the Gold Souk area in Dera. Part of the Dubai Shopping Festival promotions and its 20th anniversary, the world record was made possible by Dubai Gold and Jewellery Group in association with four major jewellers in town. Dubai Festival and Retail Establishment CEO Her Excellency Leila Sahel said this year's DSF is a major milestone in Dubai's calendar as it celebrates two decades of success for the festival, shopping and festivities. The Dubai celebration chain commemorates this, says Chairman of Dubai Gold and Jewellery Group Tawheed Abdullah. The chain will be available in more than 500 retail outlets until the 1st of February. The public can still place their orders for a piece of the chain, which will be priced according to the daily price of gold. Today we have hit the world record of the longest handmade 22 karat chain made in UAE, made out of 600 over people with five different manufacturers with effort of all of us, government department, jewelry trade, jewelry uh, partners from international part of the world, and with the best price and with a very minimum surcharge of added value. And each piece has got an authenticated certificate to go with it, with a Guinness Book record. It is 5,522 meters, that is 5.5 kilometers long. It is weighing 256 kilos and uh, almost 100 workers have been working jointly from these five companies for over 45 days and uh, over 10 hours a day every day and uh, they have produced this piece of history. Uh, almost uh, 4.8 million links have gone into the manufacture of this chain and this is a completely handmade chain and we are proud of it. And finally in the bulletin, top performers from the Paris Opera National Ballet will return to Dubai for the second time this weekend to perform the Ballet Gala and have promised a breathtaking performance for the audience. At a press conference, organizers announced that the Ballet Gala will be held at the Madinat Theatre on the 8th, 9th and the 10th of January following what they described as a successful show last year. Tickets are priced at 295 dirhams and 525 dirhams. Commenting on the expectations of the performance, organizers promised to carry the audience to an unprecedented level of excellence and fill them with more wonders, prestige and excitement. According to the organizers, the audience will be treated to the most popular choreographies, which include Grand Par Classique by Govovsky, the original and passionate Kali Oula, choreographed by the French Etoile dancer Nicolas Le Rich, as well as three preludes from Ben Stevenson and Le Tiron Solo, choreographed by Leonid Massin in 1919. This year we'll see the return of Etoile dancer from the Paris Opera National Ballet, Carl Paquette, who will take centre stage together with the newcomer Ludmilla Pagillerio, whom will interpret a pas de deux from Notre Dame de Paris, signed in 1965. Both the 12 dancers are looking forward to performing in Dubai and promise a magical time for the audience.
I think on stage, the emotion is the most important thing. We worked for one month now in Paris, and I think most of the people don't really know what dance is all about, and I hope maybe they will discover for the first time. And the first emotion when you discover something is always the best one. And to be able to perform Cinderella and Bayadère for myself is the pieces I really enjoy in classical ballet. So, yes, I'm very excited to dance on Thursday. They will see um, different ballets from our repertory, from the Paris Opera Ballet. And I hope they will expand a moment where they can forget uh, all the problems and just uh, uh, spend a magical time with us, uh, dancing with us on stage. I hope to have really fun on stage and exchange that with the public and spend a good time.